Red Wings Hockey on Fox Sports Detroit is brought to you by Xfinity. Call 1-800-XFINITY today for a great offer. Ram Trucks, hurry in for a great deal on a Ram truck at the Ram Big Finish event. And by Meyer. Shop Meyer and save on everything for your holiday, from meals and parties to gifts and decor. In 1981, Chris Chelios' career spanned 26 seasons in the National Hockey League. He appeared in 11 NHL All-Star games, earned three Norris trophies, and won three Stanley Cup championships, two here in Detroit. He holds the record for most National Hockey League games by a defenseman with 1,651. Holds the record for most postseason games in NHL history with 266. Ranks eighth among defensemen with 763 assists and ranks 10th all time among defensemen in points with 948. A leader both on and off the ice. Part of Chelios' legacy with the Red Wings continues every year with the annual Breast Cancer Awareness Night and his role in the front office as executive advisor to Ken Holland. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the ice the newest member of the Hockey Hall of Fame, Chris Chelios. Chris is accompanied by his wife, Tracy, and his children, Dean, Jake, and Tara. for the ceremonial puck drop. after the first television timeouts around seven minutes into the game tonight in the broadcast booth with yours truly, Ken Daniels, along with Mickey Redmond. And really cool that Chris brought his family out for the uh, Hockey Hall of Fame celebration in Toronto. And that had never been done before. It was such a nice touch by Chris to say, come on up here because it is, you're a hockey family, but it's the family that makes you a hockey family, able to do what you do and wipe Tracy with the kids. And really neat. We'll talk with Chris about that as we get set for this game here tonight. And our goaltenders are brought to you by your Southeast Michigan Ford dealers. Nashville has been in the NHL since 1998. And when 22-year-old Czech native Marek Mazonitz made 39 saves to beat Chicago Saturday, he became just the eighth Predators goaltender to win a game. Pekka the most famous name of Nashville goalies, is out for another month with an injury. Jimmy Howard who has won his past three starts facing Nashville. The oldest and youngest officials in the game working tonight, 54-year-old Dennis LaRue and 28-year-old T.J. Luxmore, a rookie ref in his first NHL season as we're underway. Three home games in five nights starting tonight for Detroit. The Predators coming off a home win 7-2 over the Chicago Blackhawks as we've got an offside after Nashville completed a franchise-long 17-day Seven-game road trip for the longest-tenured coach in the NHL, Barry Trotz. A trip that went 2-4-1, and one, losing four men to close out the trip. Can you believe they had a 17-day trip? No, I can't. I guess I do because they did it. But, uh, yeah. boy, even in the old days, and I used to talk to Marcel Dion when he was in L.A., they, the, the most they ever had was a 14-day trip, and I thought that was ridiculous. But 17 when you're in the middle of the country, so to speak? Look at this stuff. If you're a geography major, follow us. Look at that. L.A., Phoenix, Colorado, Winnipeg, Islanders, Jersey, Pittsburgh. Can you believe they went to play Long Island, New Jersey, and didn't play the Rangers just to knock it off? It was surprising to me. Yeah. You're out there, you may as well play eight games. I mean, <laughs> over 17 days. So aren't you glad you're not in the Central Division anymore, Mick? 
I guess nice so. That. And right now the average points in the Central 27 to lead the NHL tough division. In front of the goal off Bertuzzi off the feed from Pavel Datsuk who has great success always against this Nashville team. The Predators Wilson gets in across center. And right back down the puck goes into the Predators zone back to pick it up number eight Kevin Klein on defense with number three Seth Jones the fourth overall draft pick last summer as the Predators bring it in Quincy stopping up there along with Victor Stahlberg as the puck goes in wide just behind the Red Wing net into the corner. Stahlberg trying to dig that puck free the former Blackhawk and leap from the shot in that Jimmy Howard made the save for Darren Helm out there with Thomas Tatar and Johan Franzen who now goes off in a change that's played by Mazonitz ahead to center brought in by Stahlberg backhanded one toward that Howard swept off to the corner David Leguan tried to put one in off Howard as the puck is played up here for Helm again in the second line center spot with a good play here to Danny Cleary Cleary getting help from Kimmel took the shot just wide of the goal Brendan Smith on a shift back after missing six games with a shoulder injury and the Red Wings without victory in the six that Smith had missed. Knocked down by Ryan Ellis as a long stretch pass is a good one and then wow. off the stick of Craig Smith. Mishandled it. Who had a big night, a three-point night against Chicago was the first star in the Predators' 7-2 victory at home over the Blackhawks. Samuelson will go after that puck. Beaten to it, knocked away by Victor Bartley, number 64 in white for Nashville in their defense. Put into the middle for Abdelkader. Cleary came over to help out. Puck came back to center and touched by Abdelkader. So the faceoff offside, and they'll say that's coming all the way down the ice. Intentional. This report card brought to you by Hansons, and it's going to be our supposedly our so-called second line, Darren Helm, along with Franzen and Tatar. Boy, they've been really good for Mike Babcock and the Red Wings the last two, three games. Tatar getting in front of the net, and that open shot we showed you where Franzen... Winked it off the bar, so Hanson brings you our report card. Good secondary scoring. We've talked about that, Ken, the last few games. That needs to continue for this team to win in regulation. Miller shoots it in. Yoel Kim Anderson goes in after the puck. Anderson chased there, but there by the Nashville captain, Shea Weber, number six. In behind the goal for Miller. Out there with Franzen. And again, the Red Wings going with 11 forwards tonight, so there'll be some double shifting. And one of those right now is Franzen, who's back out there. Cronwall went in. He's on defense along with Jonathan Erickson, who's got the puck now at center. Erickson with a long shot that got knocked down. That was blocked. Came back out the center. And Merrick Mazanet left it there in behind for Shea Weber. Five goals, second among NHL defensemen. And turning with it at center is his partner, Roman Yossi. Weber's old partner, Ryan Suter, now with the Minnesota Wild. Perhaps the best defenseman this season in the National Hockey League. And maybe playing with Weber just overshadowed what Ryan Suter was capable of. And now he's showing it with the Wild. He's been outstanding. Zetterberg played one back. Datsuk able to nudge one over for Quincy. Pass for Bertuzzi. It's tipped in as Klein will go back to get it. Klein's had some great games in his career against the Red Wings. Smooth play there by Jones. Sure has. Looked like the Kaiser who makes some of those plays. Just rookies and yet veteran-like. The Kaiser gets hit. Came for Wilson. That's Colin Wilson, the son Kaiser of former hurt. NHLer Kerry Wilson. Yeah, the Kaiser is limping off. Dang it. After that hit. The Kaiser makes his way to the Red Wing bench and thankfully at least takes a seat. So maybe the no, just not temporary. Yep, now he's going to the room. This is the biggest bet. How many often times have I talked about this happening to this young kid? Because he goes back there and he's vulnerable. Boy, one time I don't want to be right. Back here for Weber. And Jimmy Howard will hold on, so we will revisit uh, what happened with Danny to Kaiser. Collision in behind the goal, Hornquist. Well, it's, you know, in today's game, the forwards, and we'll talk to Chris Chelios a little bit about this, played defense for 26 years in this league, and but the rules have changed to the point where the game is different, and defensemen are so vulnerable now. You know, I worry about the Kaiser because he doesn't know the league. He hasn't played in it very long, and the personnel, and who's on the ice and who's going to hit you, and he's got to learn through experience how to maybe take a little... Deacon a dive and maybe not dive in there first 
and foremost before you go and get whacked like that even to make a play it's all great to make a take a check to make a play but you got to be smart about it and you got to read the tea leaves sometimes well maybe it's a good thing as of now the Red Wings dress 7 D tonight and 11 forwards you can count on the Kaiser going out this early hopefully back as Helm shoots one and it's the right-handed catching netminder Mazonitz just like his uh, countryman and a former good Nashville Predator goaltender in Thomas Vokun. Tatar's got the puck. Tatar tried to center one, came right in front. But no Red Wing was there as Brendan Smith back to get it. So Smith will see more ice time tonight than maybe perhaps as will Brian Lashoff. As Smith will get one to center, a lift to the stick there by Cleary. And as Smith will back up with it again and the Red Wings kindle. And look to regroup here, Samuelson alone at center. Now has Cleary coming with him. Advocator goes to the goal and a shot and a save made by Merrick Mazonitz, who will hold on the sixth round pick in 2012. And Pecorine out at least another month with an infection in his hip, five months following hip surgery for Rene, who's got that seven year deal. So they were hoping the uh, likes of Merrick Mazonitz would just, and Carter Hutton would have more time to play in the American Hockey League. However, in the absence of Rene, they pressed into duty and Nashville Predators with a 500 record at 9-9-2, just trying to hang in there in the very tough Central and an equally tough Western Conference. Wraparound try out the other side on the attempt there from Matt Hendricks, number 26. Cleary didn't wait long or waited too long and Samuelson is figuring to get a pass. Yeah. He's in there to the play. Abdul Cater down the back. I'm not sure. Is that uh, Shea Weber that he's into it with? Couldn't tell the number. No, no, it's a family show, gang. The rink mics are <laughs> picking up a lot of good stuff, and Abdul Kader, who likes to mix it up a little bit and be a disturber, way behind the play. There'll probably be penalties here, or maybe not. Nobody took a swing, so. Ah, okay. On the right side of your screen and behind the net. Gostad. And yeah, Gostad's a big drink of water, and Hendricks, 28 in there. And Abdicator having words with both of them, and that'll probably continue later on. Paul Gostad, who came over from Buffalo in 2012 with a fourth round pick for a first rounder. Good faceoff man. Good deal for them. Really good faceoff man. Good penalty killer. That's when you want to try to win your faceoff and have a high percentage to kill a lot of time. On Wall and Erickson, Datsuk with Zetterberg and Bertuzzi. That long stretch pass for Bertuzzi didn't work. So the faceoff will come back down into Red Wing territory. And you know the story with the uh, Red Wings, winless their past six games, 0-1 and 5. But the neat thing for Detroit, you talk about not winning, but they've got points in 10 of 13, 9 of their past right. 10. And very much now in the Eastern Conference playoff race. They're right in the middle. They are. They're five points. And we'll, another time, we'll take the time to show you how it's working of the division. Five points ahead of the next best team for a playoff spot. And the Red Wings have to get winning with two points is here at home. That's it. We'll try that for Bertuzzi in a save made. Red Wings 3-2-6 and six at home and winless their past seven at Joe Louis Arena. Sooner or later, you got to get two points. Right. You can't survive on 50 or 60 ties. You're not going to get 80 points. Especially the last five games, having gone to overtime or shootout, no matter where they are. That's knocked down with a high stick, so we'll get a face-off. And when we come back, the Hall of Famer, Chris Chelios, will join us in the booth. As we showed you moments ago, just prior to the game tonight, only daughter Kaylee missing from this great family right here, Chris Chelios, and uh, dropping the puck tonight. And I know it's a great honor for you, and I know you probably got nervous before some games, but what a great speech, first of all, at the Hockey Hall of Fame <laughs> a week ago last night. Were you nervous as you could have been that night? Yeah, I had a headache for the last month just <laughs> dreading that thing. But, you know, I got through it, thank God, and had a lot of friends and family. Every time I started getting nervous, I just seen someone's face. Well, I want to ask you, what... When did the thought come through your head, Chris, to have your family come up? Because it had never been done before, and I thought that was really cool. Well, I figured after sitting in the, on the back seat for all those years, and I, not, a lot of it had to do with my friends and family hadn't seen my kids ever or for a number of years. I just wanted to show them off. And um, the tradition in basketball, I've been to a few Hall of Fames there, was that they'd have mentors or coaches up on stage. So I couldn't think of anybody better to put up there than my family. 
Nicely done. Nicely For done. Sure. Uh, I'm looking at some numbers here. Did anybody, did your mother ever get mad at you for spending about three weeks in the penalty box? 3,000 penalty minutes almost over those years? Somebody said that. It's like, whatever, two days. I, one of the guys up at the Hall of Fame, a friend said that. Do you realize that time? So 2,900 minutes. Yeah. A long time. It is a long time. I should have shut my mouth. It wasn't quality time, I'll tell you that. It must have been neat Look for you, this. too, to have Bob Gainey, who did the intro on television, talking all about your career. Pretty yeah, cool. that was one of the things I didn't realize. I thought we had to pick a presenter, and that took, other than the speech, that was the next thing I had to worry about. And when they told me, actually Bob called me, and he, he asked if he could do it. And what a great honor to have my first captain and, and teammate in Montreal do it. I mean, the only other option was Kid Rock, and they would have to bleep out half the presentation, <laughs> so that worked out okay. Speaking of which, how did you come up with so many celebrity friends? Over the course of your career, it just that you're a great guy. I mean, how did you happen to get into that crowd? Well, there's two crowds. There's obviously the, the, the hockey crowd that I've been around for, you know, my whole career. And then when I moved out to Malibu in the summers for it's been 23 years now, you know, all those people you saw, our kids went to camps together. Uh, Malibu's a small place. You run into them and you, at the restaurants. So, and they just became great friends. And they're interesting people. We had, or, you know, from, you know, who knows, Cindy Crawford, my, my idol. <laughs> as far as other people's <laughs> I, I Yeah, her, but, exactly. But I heard her husband, Randy Gerber, is such a great guy. And I think the biggest thing out of the whole weekend was how much my friends enjoyed being with each other and said what a great group of people they were. What a great party you had from everything that I hear yeah. at Wayne Gretzky Saturday night in, in Toronto. They yeah. like this stuff. <laughs> For once, uh, yeah, the highlights. I like myself on the ice, not in the booth. But, um, <laughs> no, I, like, it was amazing. Wayne Gretzky actually told me he wasn't going to make it, and then 45 min minutes later he walked in and surprised me. Uh, he hosted the place with, you know, at his place. Uh, it couldn't have gone any better. And, uh, like I said, my friends and family had the time of their life. And the whole idea was to have a night that they'd never forget and a weekend they'd never forget. You wore number 24 in Montreal. Yep. I had number 24 in Montreal. I know why I got it, because Peter Mahavlik had seniority on me, and he got number 20. So I had to get 20, uh, 24 yep. by default. How did you get yours? Pretty much default. It was the only normal number left. Also, so many retired. You know how many jerseys are retired yeah, right. in Montreal. Right. And Serge Savard had promised me 21 uh, prior to the, the, after the Olympics. And I'm watching the game in the hotel that I just arrived in Montreal from the Olympics. And I see a guy running around on the ice, 21. Guy Carbono, he so seems to be playing that. a lot. So I got 24 the next day, and I was happy with it. So. I, I have often said that for me, starting in Montreal, and I've been only playing for two teams in Detroit, two original six, the best thing in the world. Yeah. But the Canadians at the time were the, the envy of the, of the hockey world. I mean, they did it right for a long, long time. Is that basically what happened? You're one of the few American guys to get over there like you did in the beginning and, and get your start with those guys as well. Yeah, and I said, I've always said it's like getting a Harvard degree when you break in with a team like that with the amount of players who have been there and won and had the success. And then I would have never turned out to be the player I was. Uh, no selfishness on any of those players like Larry Robinson, Bob Ganey, Guy Lafleur. Uh, they handed the torch over to the young guys so gracefully, and, and fortunately, we were able to win the cup the second year and, and share with the guys like that. It's, it's really special. You got to be lucky to play with a group like that. It's amazing to think, and, and a lot of people forget this, that you played here longer than Chicago. A lot of people don't realize that. No, but the, the, they put me in the jersey there, and Mrs. Ellis weren't, wasn't too happy about that at the hall and, and all the programs. But the only reason why they did it was because I had more games played with Chicago, believe it or not, okay. which I didn't know until that, that happened. Well, as you got older, maybe you got hurt just a little bit more. Yeah, or a healthy scratch is good now. I wasn't going to go there. And by the way, speaking of not going there, but I will. 15 of those, I would have beat the hawk. <laughs> No, I'll just shut up about that. Yeah. Nice, nice job on the ex on the acceptance speech too. I mean, you mentioned Ted Lindsay and Carl Brewer and all the players' association. You got another penalty coming here, yeah. so the Red Wings are going to be down the three on five on three. But you you, you stayed away from well, a lot of the controversy. I know well you're done. saying it wasn't yeah. the time or place, and I, I've always actually agreed to do a book with Kevin Allen within the next year, and that will be the time and the place to... Oh, my. Well, like I said, it'll be a tribute to all my friends. It'll be for kids about training and, you know, the path it took and, you know, growing up as a kid in Chicago, but also the Players Association, I still got a bad taste in my mouth about what happened there, only because the relationships, like I mentioned in my speech, they're strained, and it's like today I see Stu Grimson in the, uh, in the media room, and he won't say a word to me, all because of that, you know, so... Wow. 
You know, right. For all the sleep I lost and you know everything I went through and a lot of the players went through, I think it's time to get it out. And like I said, Ted Lindsay, Carl Brewer, what they and all the rest of those players back then, what it took for them to build the, the player the players association, the sacrifices they made. I want the guys that are playing now, the young kids, to, to be aware of what it takes to you know for that union. It so does not there was a penalty there to uh, Nashville as we got going, yeah, so not to the yeah. Revics too, so that's it, good. It does defeat the purpose of what it's all intended because hockey players for the most part are all pretty dang good people. Absolutely. And uh, and throughout their lives, before they played in the NHL, after they played in the NHL, it's, it's a unique and wonderful brotherhood, and you're right. It, uh, yeah. it shouldn't have to be separated by stuff like politics and all that. Yeah. The business stuff. And I understand, I said it, I understand business, I understand politics, but you still don't have to accept it, especially when right and wrong is in the Indian equation. You know, it's just some things, and especially with the media, when, you know, I can't say it now, but I will say it later. But the media controls that, and I think it painted a bad picture of the players during the lockout, which I didn't like that at all. Red Wings are now on a belt tire power play. Cough that one up. And speaking of media, you'll be working for, you are working now for Fox Sports 1, and you'll be part of the uh, Olympic uh, coverage. You're excited about that? One of them, yeah. Well, yeah, you're one of them now. You're on the dark side. Yeah, I think with the Olympics, it's something special, though. I've had the opportunity to play there now to go there as a spectator and an analyst. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, there's nothing like the Olympic experience with all the other athletes and being in the village and at the games and all the, you know, the energy that every country brings. So I don't know how good I'll be in the booth, but like I said, I'm going to work hard up the next three weeks to get used to it. And uh, hopefully it won't look like a stiff out in front of the camera. You won't be. You'll do a great job. As the Red Wings are in a belt tire power play here with a half minute left in it, just past the halfway point in the first period, looking for our first goal and a shot and a save right there by Mazanitz. And I got a, as the puck goes off to the far side, ask you, Chris, talking about working out and how in great shape you were as the puck goes off Sederberg there. Where did it start with the bike and the sauna? As yeah. Sederberg gives it to Datsuk, back oh. for Sederberg, skate the stick in oh. front, cleared away. Cronwall gives it to Datsuk. Keep that thought in mind. Datsuk with a shot that gets knocked down, and Bertuzzi will circle with it. Put it in behind as the power play comes to a close, but the Red Wings still with it. Sederberg in front of the goal. Yeah, Thought on that, bike oh, in the sun. I'm on the run here. Anyway, yeah, that was something that in Wisconsin, there was a, a football coach named Dave McLean, and I saw him one day just riding the bike in the sauna. It, it, it looked like a good thing to do to you know, get all the toxics out and get an easy sweat when you didn't have time. And unfortunately, Dave McLean died in that sauna spinning a bike. So, Real. so be yeah. careful to any kids well, who want to try something like that. Be yeah, very careful. You, he was no. wearing a rubber suit, which you don't do. No, okay. and, like the wrestlers use to cut weight and stuff. So, right. you know, I, you got to be careful for sure. We got to run here. Oh, Way to take a count. Thanks for doing this. Nice job, Chris. Yeah, nice thank job. you, guys. Congrats. Chris Chelios, Hall of Famer, and now on the dark side with us. <laughs> So with just 11 forwards tonight, Mick, Mike Babcock had to shuffle things around and losing Danny DeKaiser early. Just to recap, now the defense down to six. Yeah, only 13 bodies on the bench. As the Predators get that face off, teams back to five aside here. As Franzen carries in along with Tatar and Helm, the regular second line for the Red Wings. Quincy on the blue line with Brendan Smith. Brought in here by Nashville, and the shot from Victor Stolberg went wide. He had a goal against Chicago, his former team, on Saturday night. Again, Nashville with seven different goal scorers in that 7-2 victory. After Nashville had lost four straight, outscored 17-2. And yet they got seven at home against Chicago. And now they're back on the road again for a few. Gostad didn't handle it cleanly. Puck is knocked away. Back to the line here for Klein. Off to the other side for Seth Jones in a shot. Off a leg and went wide of the goal. Jones, the son of former NBA, Popeye Jones. Seth from Colorado. And Popeye was playing there. It's loose in front of the net. Knocked down out of the air. Brought on here by Abdelkader. With Samuelson and Cleary. Picked up first by Matt Hendricks. Lead pass for Ryan Ellis, the 11th overall pick in 09 of Nashville. Won Memorial Cups in back-to-back -back years with the Windsor Spitfires. But Ryan Ellis, who's got it now at the right point, got a good shot off those lively backboards, purposely done by Ellis. But Howard will hold on. Well, Ken, you mentioned the guys are still not back, and here's the reason why. 
Hornquist right here, bang. He is completely vulnerable. And it looks like a left arm or a left shoulder. Crunches him in. He's not in a position to check, uh, to protect himself. And you can see in favor on that left side. And look at his face here. That is not a good scene. And, oh, dang it. I mean. But how can you really protect yourself on that one, Nick? That one, you got to make contact with a guy coming at you before he crunches you. Kill or be killed. I, and, and I mean that in, in but the right But is that, way. Is that a rookie? Is that a Danny DeKaiser? Yes. Would a veteran Cronwall recognize that most, most of the so? time? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. You have to know, A, who's on the ice against you and who's going to run you. Most of these guys do today. The fact that they're not giving it up like we used to in the old days, you got to be better at it. And you got to. I remember Sergei Fedorov when he first started. After a while, Sergei and I were talking one day, and I said, Sergei, you can't be plowing into those corners like that. They're going to kill you. And finally, he got smart and started backing off, either make contact first or fake it and go in behind, you know? I it's wish, not being chicken to do it. I wish I thought of that question when Chris was here because it was often said that when Chris went to hit someone, he'd say, I'm coming, I'm coming, oh, and sure. he'd let the player know he was coming to hit him. I did that to my brother a couple of times. Here's Datsuk with a shot that went off the skate. If I hadn't have, he'd have lost his head. But, you know, you give him a heads up. Right. Zetterberg. Gets a pick there from Datsuk on Mike Fisher, loose in front. The goaltender can't grab it yet. Finally brought out of harm's way by Wilson. But I think, again, to, to finish up on that, it, it's, it's really difficult. And Jimmy should have that out of play, and he does nicely. It's difficult, and the young players have to learn where the landmines are, and hopefully he's not injured too badly. There were 519 players taken before Jonathan Erickson and Patrick Hornquist were picked in the draft. They were each last taken in the draft in their respective years, Hornquist, after Erickson was taken years later. If you look at the top four, we can call them Mr. Irrelevant. The last players drafted since 1969, Kim Johnson, the most games played in points, Andy Brickley, who's now an analyst on uh, with Jack Edwards on Boston Bruins Television, and then Patrick Hornquist and Jonathan Erickson, the top four in terms of games played for those who were picked last in the draft when it used to be from 1969 when the draft began and I don't know, 13 rounds, 11 rounds, 9 rounds, now it's only 7 rounds. Good message to young kids, never give up, boy. And Erickson, who struggled for 3 or 4 years here to get his feet on the ground and out of the water, has become a real integral part of the Red Wing defense. He's matured, it's taken longer than some would like, but by the same token, he's playing 25 minutes a night here in Cronwall usually until DeKaiser came around, were the two guys playing the most against the best on the other team every night. And that's pretty darn good for a guy icing here that was last in the draft and almost like, uh, we'll just take him because nobody else is there. And you know, Jonathan Erickson nice likes job, the joke. Guy. John B52. says, he says, I wasn't the last pick in the draft. They said, yeah, you were. He said, no, Marc-Andre Fleury was taken after me. Because he was first you, the next year. First the next year. Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. However you want to disguise it, Jonathan, humor. go ahead. Yeah. But last pick, and remember, he was a center. He was a forward before he went back to defense. Why? Because his father, Sven, was coaching his team in Sweden. They had too many players who were sick. They, they needed a defenseman, and that's when the Red Wings saw him when he wound up on the blue line. Didn't they? I think the story goes they went to see somebody else in that game. I would have been Hawk and Anderson. Eric. And notice Erickson yeah. only playing defense because that happened he had more to play. Times than not. And they saw him the first game he was playing back in defense because they didn't have enough defense. Those scouts will tell you, I went to see uh, number 10, and uh, then all of a sudden this number th number 14 was all over the ice. I went and said, you know what, I better watch this guy again. Next thing you know, he's dazzling everybody, and uh, Marty St. Louis is a story like that. Right, yeah. It was like an afterthought, and uh, they couldn't... They couldn't Leave him alone. They couldn't resist. Ryan Martin, the Red Wings assistant GM, was going to watch their guy Xavier Roulette play and noticed on the other team there was Anthony Mantha. Now he started yeah. scoring like crazy, but the Red Wings had their eye on him from the beginning. As that puck goes off the skate in behind the net. Still looking for our first goal of this game as Applicator gets checked there by Paul Gostad. One-time saber. Puck held into the line. Gostad again will shoot it in as Nashville looks to complete a change here. Hornquist threw it around the other side to Wilson. Goes back to the line to Seth Jones. Picked off there by Kendall. Lead pass for Tatar. 
Kindle still the highest Red Wing draft pick since Marty LaPointe. Anthony Mantha was 20th and Kindle 19th. And that's a Marty LaPointe 10th and 91. The nature of being good. so good and finishing so high. Here comes Hornquist in. And Howard got a piece of that. Wow. Fans appreciate that stop. Back to Jones at the line for Klein off his skate. Klein had it blocked. Franzen got in front of it. Puck to the line, but not out. Still stays in Red Wing territory. A hit there by Cronwall on his countryman Hornquist who put the Kaiser out of the game. Over here to Seth Jones. Shot got blocked. Jones held it in. Jones with a couple of goals and eight points on the season. Johan Franzen up with Helm and Tatar. And Franzen inadvertently bumped into Tatar. They're now going off in a change, and Helm will follow suit. But that suit unit comes over the boards with Zetterberg and Bertuzzi. Long stretch passes offside as it was touched there by Victor Stolberg. Well, maybe the best scoring chance of either team here in this hockey game tonight came a moment ago. Nice move by Hornquist at the line. He had Franzen moving the other way. He's against the grain. And he walked in and went to the back end. Got a little bit of a hook. No penalty there in Jimmy Howard. Uh, watch Darren Helm. Watch what he does. Uses his backside to take the hit. And look where the arms are. Up in the air against the glass. That way your shoulders don't get crunched. Nice job by Helm, who's been around a while to know that I'm close to these boards. I got to make sure I get my arms up and protect myself from being smashed into the glass. Darren Helm and a goal. Look at an assist against the Islanders. Smith. Leg one. Chopped the puck away from him. Trying to bust through his setter but Weber's there as Weber and Yossi will be against this line most of the night coughed up there to Datsuk by Weber across. Oh, and it was blocked by Yossi without a stick as Bertuzzi let it go. Datsuk back for Bertuzzi. Back to Datsuk again. Flip one over for Bertuzzi. Chased by the Swiss native Yossi. Who has a stick given to him by Gabriel Bork. Quincy in front. That was handled by Mazonitz. To the far side, Zetterberg trying to kick it free from Leguan, who's got a skate on that puck. Leguan able to kick it back and Gabriel Bork just relieving the pressure. Out of play. So the faceoff will come back into the Nashville zone. Have a look at this Ken. A couple of plays and the boys downstairs, MJ and the gang. Here's the Kaiser earlier in the period. He looked over his shoulder but he didn't protect himself. He didn't have a chance to do so and he's out of the lineup because of it and moments ago Darren Helm watch what he does. He looks over his left shoulder, sees the guy coming puts his rear end out, arms go up no damage there. Mind you, 33 didn't hit him like Hornquist did, but when you're protecting yourself, you can't do it anyway. You can try, but those arms can be a big equalizer, boy. As I said, let's hope that Dan DeKaiser's injury is not long-lasting. Sometimes, Ken, you ask me the question, you've got to give up the play to protect yourself. There's nothing wrong with that. It's a long career ahead of you. Fired back in by Lashoff. Brought on here by Jones. Seth Jones coming through. And that's offside. And as Chris Chelios joined us in the booth, well, on Thursday night, it'll be Brendan Shanahan here with us to visit. Oh, there'll be lots to talk about with him. And you can celebrate yeah, Hockey Hall of Fame night honoring Brendan this Thursday as the Wings take on Carolina. All fans in attendance will receive a commemorative poster. We gave out 22000 tonight for Chris. For tickets, call 313-471-7575. Ticket executives are standing by as the Hall of Famer, Brendan Shanahan, and the... Uh, VP of player safety or whatever that exact title is. He's the well, one who doles out the uh, the Shanna bands, as they call them in the NHL, the punishment, the suspensions. Fortunately, Red Wings players don't normally get involved with things and hits that Shanahan has to deal with, so the fans won't be mad at that. They might be mad at some of the hits that weren't called more severely against Red Wings, but uh, not on the or maybe, giving in. Maybe just thinking the one when Shea Weber 
took Henrik Zetterberg's head and used it into the turnbuckle <laughs> and uh, got nothing. Now, Sandy's watching in New York tonight. He's making notes, so he's ready for us. Oh, I'm sure he is. <laughs> it won't be the first time I've said something on the air yeah. when Brendan was playing. said, uh, by the way, yeah. a friend told me, and I said, really? Or did you hear? Because <laughs> you taped yeah. the game and you heard it. Yeah. No, we love Brendan, and he's uh, done, he's done a really good job. And I know all those suspensions early and probably took some heat. But uh, well, trying nice. to keep at it. And uh, remember, during the lockout 405, it was the Shanahan Summit, which set the stage for the game that we're seeing today. High in the slot, and Howard came out and got an arm on that on a Mike Fisher attempt. Fisher back to Yossi. Off to the corner, grabbed by Helm. I still remember vividly the Irish jig they used to play here at the Joe when he'd get in a that. fight. Oh, yeah. it was great. Yeah. He'd get in a fight, that's outside. they get in a fight or score a goal, and... T down there in the sound room would play the Irish jig. The fans loved it. A little bit of a late hit to, by Helm, they thought, on an offside, but uh, nonetheless, no damage done. And just a reminder, as you enjoy a cold one, to look forward to Miller time later in tonight's game. Brought to you by Miller Lite. Brendan Smith returning after missing the previous six with the shoulder injury. And we can only hope that... Uh, Danny DeKaiser's absence isn't shoulder nor that long. Shea Weber backing up with it. Gets the return pass. Four goals the last eight games against the Red Wings for Shea Weber. Fourth player in franchise history to hit 300 points. Shea Weber goes in there and took it away from Bertuzzi. Loose at center, and Stahlberg looking for it. Katsuk had him tied up. Now it's loose back in front of the goal. And good coverage by Quincy on Leguan just to prevent him from getting a shot. And the first period comes to a close. Shots are 10-7 in favor of the visitors. Brendan Smith with Trevor Thompson in our Ram first intermission. And John Keating, Darren Elliott, and Chris Osgood. For the rest, all on the concourse, and it's all yours. Kenny, thanks. This intermission, we're hoping someone fall into your lap. That's how Nashville felt a year after they lose Ryan Suter. They pick fourth. It was going to be Seth Jones, Nathan McKinnon. Who's going first? Who's going first? First, when Steve Eiserman picked Jonathan Drouin third, Nashville next. And sure enough, as part of our Toyota dealers scouting report, Seth Jones drops to fourth, and Nashville couldn't have been happier. And early on in the season with the injury to Roman Yossi, Seth Jones was paired with Shea Weber. He hasn't looked back. He's not with Shea anymore, but what a great young player, an excellent shot. He's aggressive. He takes chances. He was asked about that and not being cocky at all, but he said, when I watched Nick Lidstrom, he took a lot of chances too. If you're confident and you can do it, you can take chances because you're good enough to be back. And Barry Trotz, they're just singing this guy's praises. Uh, he's playing the left side too, being a right-hand shot. And he plays the wrong side of the ice, so to speak. And just like Danny DeKaiser does the other way. And unfortunately, the Red Wings lost Danny DeKaiser tonight with a left shoulder injury, and he won't be back. Well, Seth Jones was number one in everybody's book for the longest time leading up to that draft. Easy pick by Jimmy Howard. But, I mean, that's a crapshoot, too. You never know. And I don't know. A lot of times, high draft picks don't work out, and low draft picks do. You just never know. Especially with 18-year-old with draft. My dad never liked the 18-year-old draft, mainly because when he was in Peterborough, it stole a kid away from Peterborough at 18 when they just had two years or a year to get the fans behind them, and they are stealing them to go to the NHL. But more importantly, because they were too young, most of them, and too immature physically and mentally, for the most part, to go up and play with the big men, and you end up getting hurt a lot of times. Brendan Smith coming back to get to that puck, and a good job to knock it aside, to hustle back for Quincy. Seth Jones spent a couple of years with the U.S. National Development Program in Ann Arbor. We're going to Portland in the Western Hockey League. Wilson carries up the left wing in for Hornquist. He was the one who hit the Kaiser. Knocking Danny out of the game. No word yet, obviously, how long he will be out. With the Red Wings dress seven defensemen tonight. That wasn't the reason for fear to injury, but with Daniel Alfredson and Stephen Weiss still nursing groin injuries, but both should be back soon. He went with 11 forwards and seven defensemen tonight, so 
that part of the equation Wouldn't has worked know. in their favor. Wouldn't you know it, eh? Yeah. Bad luck. <laughs> Forced all the way back. Leguan threw one out to center ice. Picked off here by Jonathan Erickson. Lead pass for Drew Miller. Ryan Ellis on that first. Punched along and blocked. Gabriel Bork will go back to get it. Real puck hound Gabriel Bork is. This will go down and be icing. So a charge against Nashville. If a Detroit player gets a hat trick in this game, bring a copy of the scoring summary to our participating Arby's location tomorrow for that free small order of curly fries. And you can find that summary in your newspaper or on the Red Wings page at foxsportsdetroit.com. Abdicator in the middle for Tatar and Clear or Anderson on that draw. Shot just wide as Anderson's between. Tatar and Cleary as the puck is sent past last shot. Kindle back to get it. For Anderson. For Cleary to Anderson again. Joachim Anderson with a pass across. Knocked out of the air. Good play, Tatar. <laughs> and a good save by Mazonitz. You know, there's one opportunity. A bad angle, albeit, but nice knockdown by Tatar. Right out of midair. Out of boy. But the Red Wings have not challenged this young goaltender very much at all. There's a grand total of seven scoring chances in the first period. That is pretty skin skimpy, boy. Well, if they can, Detroit needs to get this thing going offensively and create some scoring chances on this kid. Azan, it's a, a big goaltender at 6-4. Zetterberg in the corner. Weber on him. Bertuzzi back into the slot. Kindle had hustled in. That's who could come back and get it. Weber played more than just against this line in the first. He played nearly 10 minutes in the opening period. Roman Yossi, his defense partner, not far behind. Weber's got it. Long stretch pass is a good one, but Nick Spalling couldn't corral it. Spalling had that big goal in the playoffs for Nashville in 10-11. Game six against Anaheim, the series deciding goal that gave Nashville its first playoff win in franchise history. Prior to the year taking out Detroit the next season. Face off coming up in the Nashville zone. They waited a long time for that. Well, this is their 15th year in the Wait, league. Boy, they were frustrated many, many, many times by the Detroit Red Wings. And David Poyle used to say, we've got to learn to compete with the Red Wings if we're going to go anywhere. And they finally were able to do it that year. This is the 13th road game for Nashville. Top five in the National Hockey League. All part of that 17-day trip they had when they played seven of them. Red Wings able to come up with that puck as Helms got it. In front, and Helm just missed it. Grabbed there by Craig Smith. Got the center, spins one back into Detroit territory as Howard will tee it up for Brendan Smith. Gets the return pass. Bronson will just chip it. It's onside. Bouncing puck knocked away by Klein for Smith. Off the skate of Matt Cullen. Long pass by Smith. Knocked down by Seth Jones. Jones with it. Again, right-hand shot. Plays left side. Now goes off in a change. The shot in by Craig Smith was deflected wide of the net. Samuelson with a long slapper. Bork first for Nashville. Samuelson in there for the Red Wings to intercept. Threw it back in down low where Miller gets squeezed to the boards trying to get it past Bork. No relation to the great Raymond. Stutter step there by Erickson. Tried to go to Miller. Abdelkader in front. And David Leguan will carry ahead. Second overall pick in 98. Passed off here in a shot by Stahlberg, handled by Jimmy Howard. David Leguan's best year, 63 points for him. He's the Predators' all-time leading scorer. And off to a good start this year with four multi-point games. The last eight, three goals and ten points. Spent a little bit of time in this neighborhood. Gross Point Woods. He said his, uh, more than his 
fair share of injuries, too, in his young career. Looking for his first goal in seven tonight. He's been setting them up, just hasn't been scoring them himself. That draw one back. Oh, off the goal post. Whoa. Hard shot from Yossi. Rattled the iron. Came out funny. Bertuzzi. Datsuk on the fly. Back in front off a skate. Huck held in. Bertuzzi couldn't get to it. Shea Weber will. Knocked down here by Roman Yossi for Shea Weber. Tied with Kimo Timonen for number one in defense points all time in Nashville history with 301 Weber and Timonen. Smith for Zetterberg out there with Datsuk who piles up the points playing these Predators. We've seen him go end to end and score some beauties. What a Datsuki and Deke right there. Back to the line and a shot and a save made Can't off the last shot off attempt. Can't get a puck to have eyes in the last seven or eight games, Detroit. Nothing is going in from back there at the blue line. They really need some puck luck very badly. And especially here at home where Detroit in 11 home games and a period and a bit has scored just 24 goals. You think something, I mean, anything sometime, one time even, would find its way through accidentally. But it hasn't. Seth Jones gets bumped by Cleary. A loose puck as Anderson hustled over. Knocked down at center by Kendall. Smith got it to Gostad, but a quick feed. Anderson missed it, but no icing as Kevin Klein is back. Around for Jones. For Spalling. Nice little flip pass ahead as the Predators, three of them are up. Shot hit a leg. Spalling going over to get it. Out along with Matt Cullen and Craig Smith. Cullen number seven. Penalty. The dreaded hooker. Here we go. So we'll be back with a uh, power play for the visitors. You're watching Red Wings Hockey on Fox Sports Detroit Plus presented by Bell Tire. Well, you've talked a lot, Kenny, about Seth Jones. Six foot four, over 200 pounds. He's 19 years old. Here's a look at what he's done here tonight. And the last replay, I want you to pay attention to it, where Abducator runs out and tries to get a good chunk of him. Look at that, backpedaling, nice forward pass. Watch this. Watch his move. Boom. Recognized the danger. The landmine was there. Spun out, hardly got touched. That's not like a 19-year-old normal right there, boy. Erickson in the box for hooking, so Nashville goes to a power play. Their first one was cut short by a penalty. So Yossi and Weber on the back end. Two good shots from back there. Weber, uh, the best of the bunch. We're including most of the National Hockey League in that regard. Yossi had it go off flash off and uh, up into the seats and out of play for a souvenir. I'd say that the Red Wings uh, really need to score the first goal in this game and hang on to the lead. Their confidence in overtime. They've had some unbelievable chances in overtime to win games and haven't been able to do it. And they haven't looked good in the shootout at all. At least with the people that they've put out there so far. So... Mr. Datsuk's been on a roll lately. All kinds of goals with power plays and so on. And he and Zetterberg almost on a nightly basis are a two-man wrecking crew, so to speak. But uh, they really need to get some confidence, play with the lead, feel good about themselves, and get out of here with only 60 minutes of play and, not, and no more. And that shootout you refer to, the Red Wings just one for 12, meaning one goal on 12 attempts on the one goal is uh, with a groin injury. That's awful. Daniel Alford. They've been off in the shootout. The other night there with Washington Holtby, that's an icing with the team in the power play. Holtby stick-checked all three guys. Yeah. Well, the last five have gone to extra time that Detroit has played. They've lost them all. The last three by shootout and two in overtime. So, again, to turn the negative into a positive, though, the Red Wings have points in nine of their past ten games, but are going through their Longest home drought since 1989, winless in seven. At 0-1-6, just one regulation loss in that time, the one game they came up without a point. And it was a bad time, really, for this to happen because this home schedule was pretty favorable for Detroit starting a week ago. 
Yossi with a shot, hit a body, deflects over to Miller. It's over seven and a half gone here in period number two. Ken Daniels, Mickey Redmond with you. Double jam at the puck there by Yoel Commanderson, and glad you're with us tonight on Fox Sports Detroit Plus. Oh, strange bounce there. Wilson was in too deep. Not only do those, those shallow nets couldn't even help the Nashville forward on that one as it stayed in behind the goal. Lashoff gets enough of it to center. Knocking it down was Ellis. Weber. Penalty to Erickson is now over. And brought through by Seth Jones. Jones has it. Erickson getting back into the play. They center one for Wilson. Knocked away. Pinballs to the corner. Erickson with it. It'll roll down, and Mazanitz had to stop that puck. So Nashville 0 for 2 on the power play. Red Wings have had but one try. Jones trying to knife his way in and came out and then offside. Don't miss the action when the Wings battle the Philadelphia Flyers Wednesday, December 4th. The first 7,500 fans in attendance get a Pavel Datsuk bobblehead. And for tickets, call 313-471-7575. Now, ticket executives are standing by. Even that head will be weaving and bobbing. Hey, it's a, he's a good guy to have a bobblehead, for sure. He bobbles. He bobbles all over the place. Saved by Mazonitz. Game number uh, 801 for Pavel Datsuk and through 800. 789 points. Only three players, Jager, Solani, and Thornton have more points through 800 games as uh, Pavel became the 14th Red Wing to hit 800 games. His career against Nashville, 68 points in 61 games. The time to get that going tonight. Tatar out with Franzen, who's got it at the line and held it in an abdicator. Tatar skate the stick and a shot loose in front. Jeez. But Merrick Mazanitz found that puck and he'll hold on to it. He, he digs for the puck pretty good, this kid. And the abdicator, you know, doing his thing, screening everybody and Puck went between he and the defenseman's feet and bounced off the goaltender. It's hard to not give up a rebound in a situation like that, but quick quick as a cat to, to jump on the loose puck. Franzen almost had it go out over the line. Nice little move there a moment ago by Tatar. Much smaller than everybody he plays against, but quickness and smarts keeps him on the safe side of the injury bug. That's who kept it in at the line. Zetterberg. Backhands one. Bertuzzi reaching in for it. Datsuk stole it from Bork. Turns back with it. Makes a great play to Smith. Zetterberg from the line had it blocked. Smith able to keep it in and a bouncer. Bertuzzi taken to the boards by Seth Jones, who gets help from David Leguan. Who had it stolen by Datsuk, who got it to Zetterberg, protects the puck. Zetterberg, as Smith moves in down low, the shot in and a save by Mazanitz again. A nice job by that goaltender to fight the traffic in front and find the puck to make the save. That wasn't an accident. Boy, Pavel really wants this puck. He's got it now. Off the feed from Zetterberg. Just failed to work free. Brendan Smith. Good fake back for Zetterberg and gained ice. Tatar. Shooting it in, Helm going in there with Yossi. <laughs> Tatar's like a wiffle ball out there. He gets hit, he yeah. flex about 10 feet. <laughs> Owen Wilson put it in front, off the skate, came back to the line for Weber. Cronwall and Wilson. Off the skate, deflects to Helm, keeps on going. Gets some help in here from Franzen, who puts on the brakes, put it in front, out of the air for Tatar. Darren Helm able to get to it. There's a hold. And a penalty. Speed. Speed will do that to you. Red Wings go to the power play with 9-1 left in the second period and a scoreless game. 
Well, Brendan Smith has not played very much hockey in the NHL in his young career. He's just getting his career started, but he missed six games, and look at this. Little patience here. Fake right, fake left, back to the right. Shirks off Hornquist, and then watch this move here. Here's the fake. Going back. No. Hornquist buys it. Up he comes. Nicely done, Brendan. And a nice pass to the middle, and away they go. Right there. Nice job. So he learned a few things sitting out and watching the Red Wings play. Yeah. He said he was specifically keying on yeah. Nick Cromwell. As all young players should. Well, make the most of your time if you're not in. You know, that's coach speak, right? Although he was hurt when a, when a coach says, uh, want the player in the press box to watch for a while. Just coach really means he just wants him far away from him. He has been playing well. Normally. Normally. Yeah. In this case, Brendan being injured. Ron Wallace shot off the post. Bell tire power play for Detroit. Samuelson getting over to get it. This is their second power play try tonight. Bertuzzi went for Zetterberg, but able to keep it in was Cronwall. Knocked out of the air by Zetterberg. And pass, yeah. He, he let it go in a smart yep. play. Even though it had to come out over the line. Red Wing power play, 5 for 10 the past three games. 5 for the last 11 chances, including the one tonight. Zetterberg. Didn't get through to Samuels. Pavel Datsuk leads the Red Wings with four power play goals. Todd Bertuzzi has three. Red Wings power play seventh best in the National Hockey League. Nashville penalty killing 19th. Just on side with Zetterberg as Helm threw it around. 50 seconds left in the man advantage and Quincy couldn't keep it in. Can't even get set up. They had a shot going here. Darren Helm gains the zone for Franzen. Tough pass to handle for Quincy. In the cross kick. Yeah. And as Nashville takes over, Klein with a long shot down ice. Mike Fisher's penalty is 15 seconds left in it. Look out here. And that pass to Owen in particular by Kendall. Yossi, a bouncer that Howard watches go wide, jam play there, and he was able to keep it up. Yeah, the coach got to wake up. That almost cost him a goal right there. Hendricks had the chance out along with Cullen, the veteran, number seven, forcing the issue there, playing in career game 1094 tonight. 37-year-old, free agent signing. Miller's shot went off the stick of Yossi into the protective netting. So a face-off coming up to the right of the Nashville goal. Drew Miller, seven goals against Nashville in his career, the most against any opponent. Well, he tries to keep it pretty simple most of the time. Fourth-line guy for the most part. Great teammate in the room. Penalty killer supreme. And a very quiet guy. Goes about his business very nicely. But a valuable member of the, the foot soldiers on this team. But unlike a lot of his teammates who sometimes try to get too cute and too fancy and that's how they get in trouble instead of keeping it basic and doing a little dump it in and go chase it and work hard to get it back. Brendan Smith joining Cleary who plays it off the boards and goes to get it. Oh, Mignosi got his stick up on Cleary. Cleary's got it again. Anderson with a chance. Smith will just bank it off the board, let Spalling go after it, who will go for a change instead. Erickson. No icing. Moved by Ellis. Knocked down, Bork's pass didn't work. Abdicator comes up with the puck. Behind the goal for Ryan Ellis. Feather one along that Leguan will catch up to and chip one back to center ice. <laughs> Leguan shoots it in. Sloppy, eh? Yeah. Boy. Shots are 16-13 Detroit with 
Under five and a half to play in the second period. This game's up for grabs right now, and this is why the first goal here is going to be important. There's a turnover. Datsuk back of the net. Seth Jones got in front of Datsuk. Here's an old line put back together. Dad Locator joining Datsuk and Zetterberg. But quickly, Datsuk will go off. On comes Helm. A little mixing and matching here for Mike Babcock. Wilson with a good pass back into the slot. A backhander. Good yeah. save by Howard. That was a nice stop on Hornquist. But it cost Detroit a penalty. But an excellent save by Jimmy Howard there. Nashville power play when we come back. With their move to the east, the Wings escape the Central Division where the Predators find themselves dead last with 20 points. Detroit has 25. They're fourth in the Atlantic, but they feel like they're capable of so much more. And we've seen some of that tonight, Kenny. Yes, and then playing a team like Nashville, Barry Trotz team going the power play. Nashville, though, has scored the seventh fewest goals scored per game in the NHL. Just 2.3 goals scored per game. And the next couple of games for the Red Wings, you take Ottawa out of the equation. They've got Carolina on Thursday scoring the third fewest goals. And then Buffalo last in the league in goal score on Sunday in Buffalo. So the Red Wings just a, getting a few goals here can certainly take advantage and get some victories. That shot goes high and off the glass. Man advantage here with Cronwall in the box for the hook. Side of the net for Cullen. Going back to the line with it for Jones. Over here to Ellis. Back to Jones. Oh, oh. <laughs> Falling on the play was Cullen. He stepped in the puck, I think. He knocked it right back his foot up underneath him. Jones will circle back with it. That hit the netting. They're all waving at a Red Wing player to keep the face off inside the zone. This, this kid Jones does look like a very good hockey player, boy. He's full of offense. He looks uh, far more mature than his age would tell you at 18 or 19 now. But uh, Some boy, say his boy. stock fell a bit from Memorial Cup when he wasn't quite as good, and maybe that's why yeah. Nashville got him. But there was all that debate being from Colorado with all the Nathan McKinnon, the Avalanche still looks like a pretty good pick. Yeah. And we see him, maybe the fastest skater we've seen in the league, and they got Duchesne, who's hurt right now too. But uh, for Nashville to come up with him, wouldn't you know him now, of course, there's speculation with Nashville needing goal scoring. Some point, would Shea Weber in a blockbuster deal ever be dealt for offense for a team really needing a rock in the blue line? Well, they, they, for the most part in their history, the Nashville Predators have struggled to score goals. There have been times where they've looked a little better at it, but uh, look out. Loose in front here. Howard recovered after the rebound came out. As Yossi goes back to the line here to the aforementioned Weber. Stay on Weber. Juan. Stay on Weber. And stay close to him, too, so the shot doesn't hurt as much when you block it. Leg one back to the line. Yossi. Leg one to Fisher to Leg one. Finds Weber, top of the circle, and a shot. Oh, my. That hit Smith, didn't it? Wow. Did it ever. And he didn't know where it went. Lucky. Inside the top of the circle, right-hand shot on the left side. He's got the most part of the net to look at as a right-hander. And, uh, boy, he let that baby go. Didn't take long. He maneuvered himself into position. Look at Smith go down. Oh, my gosh. Hit him right in the right hip and the hip flexor in the right side. He got lucky there, boy. And, you know, in Nashville, Barry Trotz makes his guys in practice wear the skate fenders because when Shea Weber shooting the puck, Brendan, be a problem. Brendan Smith. Does not wear them. I re I re defensemen do. I remember when Jordan Tutu was playing with Nashville against Detroit. He blocked a Weber shot against the Red Wings when he was still a predator yeah. and uh, busted his foot. Right. Four of the six Red Wing defensemen are wearing them. Four Good idea. Starters. Amazed more don't. Smith is one that isn't, for, at least for now. Calgary and Toronto have made them mandatory, although the Players Association will tell you that change in equipment... The coaching's coaches can't make it mandatory, but the players are going along with it. I guess it's okay. Yeah, that's a that's a tug of war that tough to win, especially with all the foot and ankle injuries. So Nashville 0 for 3 on the power play. Red Wings 0 for 2. 
the way they're making these things, these skate fenders that are made right here in Michigan, actually, they're so light, and I think once you get used to them, you don't even know they're there. 209 to go in period number two. Join us again Thursday when the Red Wings welcome in Carolina. Coverage begins at 7 with Red Wings Live. Thursday at 7 over on Fox Sports Detroit. There's a look at the uh, skate fenders. They're great. The Red Wings wear. Seems... Pretty basic, pretty easy, prevent injury. The light as a feather. Yeah. Ronwell, of course, probably year in and year out, blocks more shots than anybody on the Red Wings. Tatar to the slot to Franz, and he's got room. Another good move when he got dumped. One too many. Hornquist back in. Taken by Erickson. They're the two last picks in the draft together in behind the net. That's a good example there, Ken, when I said we're trying to get too cute. Tronson probably should have shot that puck one move earlier. When you're not scoring much, you got to shoot more and hope to get lucky a little bit. Tronson's got three goals the past couple of games. Jones picks up that puck from Mike Fisher, who's been in and out of the lineup with some injuries. Lower body injuries for Fisher. And a collision with Dustin Brown in the game against... Los Angeles. Knock back at center and Kindle will send it in. Knocked down by Weber over here for Yossi. Penalty coming to Detroit as Yossi was stalled at center and there'll be a hooking call to the Red Wings. Well, this bugaboo doesn't go away. They took far too many penalties in the island on Saturday night and this is an area that they really need to clean up. And Drew Miller, who doesn't take a lot of penalties, will head to the penalty box with 59 seconds, 59.7 to be exact. He's shaking his head, but most hockey players do. Yeah. In fact, Mick, yeah. the Red Wings have spent 22 minutes more time killing penalties than they've had on the power play this season, and that's the second worst in the NHL. Only Ottawa, inexplicably. 42 more minutes killing penalties in power play time. That's the worst in the Red Wings at around minus 22 minutes. No matter how you cut those statistics, they're not good. Which tells you the Red Wings either have to draw more penalties themselves to get on the power play more because they're still the third least penalized team in the league. It's not right. like they take a boatload of them. Well, if you take if you take just the third least penalized in the league, you start thinking about puck control, skating, moving your feet. And that usually draws penalties, and they're not doing enough of that. And it, it, that's also a result of not scoring a lot of goals, too. So... And then taking too many penalties, you, you, you put that in the hopper, and it comes out smelling pretty bad. Right. And yet, they've still got 25 points. I know. So, you know... Uh, and only and only five regulation losses in right. the quarter goal of the season. Right, exactly. Yeah. And at a better pace this year than they were a season ago. It's uh, deceptive. Helm tried to knock it in, couldn't, but the Red Wings do have it with a half minute to go in period number two. Shea Weber to retrieve it. Weber with four power play goals, leading all National Hockey League defensemen. Weber over to get it. Nashville was two for five on the power play against Chicago. Weber shoots, scores! Well, there's well. his fifth power play goal for Shea Weber and his sixth of the season overall. This was a direct turnover. Poor decision by, I believe it was Joachim Anderson. Thought he was doing the right thing. Watch the play here. He goes back. He had a complete clear up the side. And nobody was there but Nashville on the other side. They go to Weber in the middle. And boom, the cannon finds the back of the net. Just like that. See right here? He could have gone up there, no problem. But he already had his mind made up. See, Weber comes down, goes back to get in position, and bingo. It's in the back of the net with five seconds left. That hurts. And Shea Weber is now the all-time leader among Nashville defensemen in points, passing Kimo Timonen with point number 302. And the first goal of this game as Nashville... Heads to the dressing room after two periods with a one-goal lead on the power play goal. Nashville one for four in the power play 
as Shea Weber's blast from the point, his sixth goal of the season. And here's what the uh, gents will be talking about in our MGM Grand Detroit second intermission report. We'll get Mike Babcock's thoughts as well, but Darren and Ozzy are with John Keating right now. Kenny, thanks. This intermission report is presented by MGM Grand Detroit. It had been a pillow fight for about 39 minutes or so, and then all of a sudden, Shea Weber, as he is known to do, set a blast past Jimmy Howard, and the Preds first blood in this one one nothing as far as the wings are concerned there hasn't been a whole lot of offense generated but the offense that has been generated is from the guys that you would expect it from the usual suspects yeah the top line has been outstanding what they want to do is control the puck we said well they've done that there hasn't been much else behind them we you know you have two of your top guys out with alfredson out and and you got weiss out so it's really falling on that top line well, my biggest concern is not enough scoring chances. The top line has been great so far. These other guys got to step up. The helm line has been good over the course of the last two or three games, but they're going to need them this, se this, second, this third period coming up. Nashville, very good record when leading after two periods. They're going to need everybody on board this period. All right, still to come before the third period begins, you'll hear from head coach Mike Babcock with Trevor Thompson, but the second intermission continues here on a Tuesday night from Joe Louis Arena. Each team on the ice has won nine times so far this season. Each team has won eight times in regulation. It's Nashville, a goal to the good, heading toward the third. Downstairs we go. Trevor Thompson with Mike Babcock. T. Well, Mike, you're down a goal and one of your top D heading into the third. What's your message to the guys? Well, we knew when we came here today we had to win 2-1 or 3-2, and that game's still there. Let's not sag. Let's go after them. I didn't think much happened in the second period, to be honest with you. I didn't think well, there was a whole bunch of chances. I didn't think our power play was very good, so we got to get that dialed in. But the bottom line is choose your attitude. The game's right here. Let's grab it. Let's go win a game. All right, good luck, and thanks, Mike. And let's win a game in regulation. Let's win a game at home. It hasn't happened for the Red Wings in the longest time. This game is right there for the taking. It's a one-goal lead for Nashville. They've been very good in playing with a one-goal lead. Wings need the next one. Ken Daniels, it's you. Thank you, John. And both these teams, the Red Wings and Predators, in one-goal games, neither team has lost in regulation. Nashville 6-0-2. Shea Weber's given his team the 1-0 lead. Red Wings 6-0-7. So neither team has lost in regulation in a one-goal game. Well, the Red Wings are in the middle of 7 of 9 and 8 of 10 games at home. This is game 6 of that. Really need to make some hay. Carolina Thursday night. Ottawa Saturday night. I think there'll be a little payback on Saturday night for the way that and, and Paul McLean's team Ottawa, Mick. They've been, as Paul Up said the other day, their only consistency is how inconsistent right. they've been. Right. So they're they're ready for the taking too, and the Red Wings should be fired up for a little revenge on that. And while they do a little repair work here, let's give you our Timberland hard hits of the game brought to you by Timberland Pro. Coming right into your living room there. Quincy, Zetterberg, Spalding, and Tatar, who usually is being hit and bounces off people. Abdul Kader, and back with Dostet and the boys. It's part of the school you go to as a linesman to repair the ice, especially around the net. And while they're doing that, let's also bring you our high-speed charter shot of the game. And it's none other than the guy that can shoot at 100 miles an hour. Although this one was a knuckleball, and Jimmy Howard never saw it. Nicely set up, though, after the giveaway with five seconds left. That really hurts. And if uh, Detroit doesn't come back in this game, that goal, that play will be the culprit. Weber is not going to miss many like that when he gets it on the net. So his team had lost four in a row, outscored 17 to two, beat Chicago 7-2, and leading here tonight by a score of one to nothing. And the game against Chicago, they won with the man who's in goal tonight, Merrick Mazanitz, despite giving up 41 shots, the most they've surrendered all season. Tonight have just given up 16 to the Red Wings. Mind you, Detroit has only surrendered 17 to Nashville. Well, Nashville's a team that plays rope a dope, and they do try to win, especially with Renee, the goaltender who's out when he's in the net. 
it's a very very defensive style game and if you try to open it up they can burn you the Red Wings look for the equalizer here third period underway Henrik Zetterberg went for Datsuk went off a skate to Erickson blocked in front by Weber chipped it off the glass Hornquist dumped it out the center Pavel Datsuk's on top of that 10 points the past eight games for Pavel Datsuk but offside was Zetterberg in ahead of the play Pavel's numbers against Nashville really remarkable. Just the, the past eight games against Nashville, four goals and 14 points in all time. He's got the most of any player against Nashville with 68 in 61 games. He could use one right now. His team could, that's for sure. But, you know, I, did, I was just thinking that Weber shot, and in fairness to the Red Wings, none of their shots, I said this before, is finding the back of the net on its own. It's hitting bodies and sticks and skates. And Weber, in spite of the fact that he could shoot at 100 miles an hour, it found its way through a mass of players and in the net. Pass through to Gabriel Borka with leg one and Victor Stahlberg. Power to hold on to that. But during this five-game winless streak, the Red Wings have tallied three game-tying goals in the third period. Some they've had to battle back when they've surrendered the lead. So they are managing to get points, so this is a long way from done here tonight. Even that game against Washington, the Red Wings had gone 40 consecutive home games back to November of 09, in which they'd won in regulation, leading by two or more. And so the Washington Capitals were uh, able to beat them. Even though they're getting points every game, another part of the bugaboo is that they've been playing from behind a lot and that just takes a lot more energy out of you to always climbing the hill swimming upstream so to speak here's drew miller shot glanced off a stick and wide miller has it again then lost it that's sent through by nick spalling kindle turns back with it for lash off has to reach to get it that prevented a, an outlet. Samuelson's got it with Miller. Will dump it in as he was checked at the Nashville blue line. Back of the goal, Samuelson put it off to the corner. In comes Cronson. Good play back. Cronwall to the middle to Erickson. Save made. Big rebound out front. Spalling can't get through. Now Ellis will dump one in to the left wing offensive corner for Nashville. Erickson made the play to Anderson out at center and he gets the return pass. Joachim Anderson back for Cleary. Too tough to handle. Knocked out of the air by Franzen and the Red Wings will regroup. Franzen, a bouncer in. And that'll be held for a face-off. Well, Pavel Datsuk in Nashville, remember this. And in. A little relish on that mustard sweater. <laughs> yeah, that was one of his all-timers right there. <laughs> the three, you could throw a blanket over those three guys. Oh, that's why he's Houdini. You're grabbing air. I, I told him the other night in the dressing room, I said, I'm going to start calling you the ghost. You're there. You're not there. They can't see it. All of a sudden, you're there. He just laughed. He loved it. He's the Motor City magician. Yeah. Weber poked at it at the line. And that was the goal of the year in a, a lot of contests taken on websites, and including the Red Wings. Brendan Smith. Bertuzzi tried to slip it through. Quincy back for Smith to Datsuk. Hits the Nashville line. Blocker save made. Good, good scoring chance right there and a nice save. A bouncer in that Howard will play off the glass. Leguan knocked it down. It's in the paraphernalia somewhere. <laughs> Nobody knows where it is. <laughs> 
it won't be the first time David Leguan stole on the puck and went to the bench with it. Remember no in the playoffs, he did the same thing. Much Pavel used, tried to use a defenseman as a screen here. Might have gone off the stick and hit the kid in the left shoulder. He is shooting the puck, obviously, more, much more than he ever has before and getting rewarded for it, too. So keep her going, Pavel. He brings you out of your seat almost every time he touches the puck. Nashville, the 10th Western Conference team Detroit is playing. Played 11 games against the East with the next three coming against Eastern opponents in Carolina, Ottawa, and Buffalo. Franzen. Tatar gets checked. Then turn back to pick it up and gets it again. Thomas Tatar. Couldn't break free from Cullen. Jones for Klein in his skates. Just pushed one back into Red Wing territory. Jakob Kindle circles the goal. For Ablocator. Again, Nashville standing up with the line, but Ablocator persisted and got it through to Samuelson. Couldn't afford to do that, Ken, because the wingers are coming back. Good safety on the wings. Pitching in goes Kindle. Checked by Spalling. Ablocator taken to the board by Ellis. Good example of that is Detroit's had very, very few of any odd man rushes in this game. Kindle shot blocked. Miller goes after it with Ryan Ellis. Ablocator, good job. Got it back into the slot, to the line. Smith shot, just wide. Lashoff was stick-checked just as he was shooting. Brendan Smith for Ablocator, back for Smith. All that time and wound up being icing. So he couldn't connect with a teammate, so the faceoff will come back in the Red Wing zone. And nightly on Fox Sports Live, Jay Onright, Dan O'Toole will bring you all the scores, news, and highlights you need. Don't miss Fox Sports Live nightly on Fox Sports 1. And they'll bring you lots of hockey highlights, too. And from our perspective, it's a, a great thing. It's always a great thing when you get lots of hockey highlights. They do that. Paul Gostad using that big frame of his, along with Matt Hendricks. Versatile player, back to the line and a shot. Sailed off the stick, stayed in as it hit the high glass. Off clear, he skate the center, but Klein able to recover. Back for Jones, and he'll shoot it in. There are not many teams in the league that can boast three right-handed shooting defensemen, like the three, two of them are on the ice right now. Clint Klein, now Weber came on, and Seth Jones is another one. This will be icing. Well, again, the faceoff will come back down. Jay Weber, who back in January 6th of 06, made his NHL debut against the Red Wings. And tonight, with a goal, gives him five against Detroit, the last nine games played. And the only goal here tonight. Point shot, deflected just wide of the goal, and Howard got over with help from Quincy to prevent that from coming back out front again. That's who couldn't knock it down, Roman Yossi. Angled one in behind for Weber, closing quickly is Bertuzzi. And then Datsuk went down on the play, got back up. We're good, we're good. Yossi sends it down the ice. This will be icing. They're not happy. Hornquist is complaining like heck that, that that's the whole idea of the hybrid icing. Call it early. And if I remember correctly, Hornquist got hurt in an icing call a couple of years ago. So he, of all people, should be the one that says, ah, you know, we might lose a few that we think are bad calls, but all in all, it's going to save some careers. Hornquist, a lot like his countryman, going to the front of the goal, Thomas Holmstrom. 
has been a good, good goal scorer, and he was in the Swedish Elite League before coming over to Nashville. Deflects through to Datsuk on a backhand and tipped off a stick and just wide. Datsuk with it again. Cronwall safely back in. Zetterberg behind the net. Checked by Gabriel Fork. Cronwall will take it at the center. Backhanded one that Nashville will carry back in. With some room and a shot by Stahlberg. Wide to the goal. They score. Leguan was there. Not sure who last got a stick on it. It may have been Bork going through. Well, they allowed Bork to get to his forehand, or Stahlberg, rather, far too long. And uh, it was Leguan, I think, that got the last guy to get a stick on it. There was Bork's stick, and no, it may just not. be Bork. It was Bork. Yeah. But far too much time for Stahlberg to come across the middle, get onto his forehand, and set up for a wrist shot with some traffic. And Nashville very quietly... 18 shots, they're up 2 now. Reflects down ice. Last shot for Kindle. Helms pass, knocked down at center. Back they come again. Smith with a rising shot. Smith regained control to Klein. Hit a stick, the flex wide. Franzen. Played for Tatar. Back to Franzen. Right into Helm. That was cut off by Mazanitz. Great A scoring chance there for Detroit. Oh, hit him right in the face. Well, good execution by Detroit there. They haven't had a lot of that tonight, but this goal could be the kiss of death for them unless they can get one back quickly. Prior to the game tonight, Chris Chelios on it for his induction into the uh, Hall of Fame in Toronto a week ago last night with his family. And Dean and Jake, Michigan State Spartans. Chris Chelios joined us in the booth for part of our first period tonight, so congrats to Chris and Brendan Shanahan will be honored, and he'll drop the puck Thursday night prior to the game with Carolina. You did hear the rumor, of course, that Chelly might hold on long enough to go into Europe and play with his boys, didn't you? Just like Gordy did. He's still in shape. He probably can still play. <laughs> he wants to go to Europe? Yeah, that, there was a rumor out there. Didn't get a chance to ask him about it. Huh. Off a skate, loose in the slot. Kendall couldn't find the handle on it. Kendall will take a shot with a screen from Bertuzzi, but uh, Merrick Mazonitz found that puck. I'll get the $59 fan pack to watch the Wings take on Carolina on Thursday or see them battle the Anaheim Ducks December 17th. Two tickets, two hot dogs, two soft drinks for just $59. For tickets, visit DetroitRedWings.com. Boy, Carolina's coming into town on Thursday. Eric Stahl, their leading point getter. With just 12 points, the lowest point production to lead a team in the National Hockey League. Eric Stahl's now become a bubble player for Team Canada. Cam Ward just back in, played in the loss last night in Boston. He'd been injured, but they do have him back. But for Jordan and Eric and Carolina, this has been a really tough season. But at hand right now, the Red Wings need two to get even with Nashville as Mike Fisher has it. Bronson up along with Helm. Going to the goal was Tatar. Puck never went that way. Hornquist. Pass was behind Fisher. Do the Bluebirds? I do. Quincy. For Helm, who was initially going off, stayed on momentarily, and now the Predators climb. Back for Jones to Kevin Klein. For Seth Jones. Off Abdelkader. And as it deflects. Up and out of play. Well, Nashville's got Detroit right where they want them. Ten minutes to go. They're up two to nothing. They can play a very defensive style. Barry Trotz is used to that. 
so much for coaches hired to be fired. Not, not for Barry Trump. Not in his case, that's the right. The only coach they've ever known in their 15 seasons. Well, and rightfully so, because he's done an incredible job at times with a roster that, uh, boy, <laughs> a lot to be desired, and with, whether it be injuries or people leaving there. Like Russians who didn't want to play there. Yeah. Alexander Radilov and, and the Kostitsin fiasco and others. And yeah. That's a nice thing. 2010 and 2011, Barry Trotz, uh, Jack Adams finalist for Coach of the Year, an award he has never won, but uh, he and Mike Babcock, the longest tenured coach. You go back three seasons, this tells you about the coaching fraternity. No kid. Go back three years. Boys, only eight coaches still have their jobs. No, with man. the same team from three or three, four seasons ago. No, that's man. it. It's not it's a, amazing. It's not a job that's for long term in most cases. No. Anymore. It's what have you done for me lately? It's result oriented. And boy, they're on a carousel. But they know that they're hired to, to be fired. They just friend them later. Oh, sorry, Mick. They hope it's later, not sooner. Yeah. <laughs> Can settle in for a while. And Mike Babcock's done out here. Yossi at the left point. Work its way around here for Drew Miller. Gets checked by Cullen. And is a free agent after some time with the Minnesota Wild. Been around a while. Yeah. Very good on face-offs. And then part of the reason, him and Gostad and... Oh, a high stick right in the face. Not much doubt about that one, and Wilson didn't like it. Red Wings are going to be shorthanded. So when we return, it'll be a Nashville power play. Red Wings hockey on Fox Sports Detroit Plus, presented by Beltire. Only Colin Wilson, being a hockey player, could laugh at losing a front tooth. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you something. Watch this. There's the stick from Cleary. And right about there, yep, there the it tooth is. flying through the air. <laughs> it's easy for me to laugh. Jeez. You've lost a few. Oh, yeah. So but... you lost some chiclets. Yeah. You did, yeah. You lost part of that tooth right there. So although he's not cut, there's still an injury with the tooth, so that's why there's four minutes. Daniel Cleary in the box. That. Yeah, bad time. Yeah. So, Weber with it, Nashville power play for Yossi. Four to high sticking for Cleary as Leguan got it over to Fisher. Back Leguan now from Yossi to Fisher to Yossi and a shot and a deflection tipped by Hornquist. They don't like to go to the front of the net. That's where he'll be stationed in front of Howard. And Patrick Hornquist as Leguan shoots one. And Howard saw that. Hornquist wow. gets pushed down to the ice about by time. Erickson's. There you go. About time somebody ended up on the rear end with an opposition colored jersey on. The two last picks in the draft. Erickson just said, Hornquist, see you later. Erickson just said, you're last because I'm up here and you're down there. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's happened when you go to the front of the net. They'll give him credit for that. He was off balance, and Erickson, <laughs> he's digging for goals. And he drilled them. <laughs> you don't see that very much, really, by Red Wing defenseman in front of the net. Brendan Smith will run at you pretty good. Lash off will, too, especially Erickson, his size. So the last five games for the Red Wings have gone to overtime. Well, they'd gladly take a sixth now going that way. Down by a couple with under nine to go in the third. The last team to go at least six consecutive games in a single season to extra time were the Maple Leafs, who went seven straight back in 2009. So at this point, the Red Wings would love to push this one to six straight. Unless they got a real miracle hold here with three in regulation. Minute 10 gone off the four-minute power play for Nashville thus far. Being down by two, that's the worst part of this, is you kill off four minutes. Knocking down your own penalty. Zetterberg and Datsuk are out for Detroit as Seth Jones sets up.
Fisher went to shoot that in. That didn't work. Stop and play. Well, Ken, AT&T U-verse brings you our reverse rewind. And it'll be the goals to this point. A beautiful Phil Necro knuckleball by the, one of the hardest shooters in the NHL, Shea Weber, on a power play after a giveaway. And then Gabriel Bork just a few moments ago. AT&T U-verse reverse 2 to nothing for the visitors. Here we go. We have one shot on this power play thus far. Leg one gets checked at the line. Weber carries through with it. David Leg one. Look back for Weber. Miller got in the way of that. So the first of the double minor is off the clock. Just over seven to go in the third. Shots are 22 21 Detroit. But they need two to get even. Leg one for Mike Fisher. Missed seven of the previous 11 games. This is his third game back from injury. Erickson knocked it away from Hornquist. Franzen sends it right down to the Nashville netminder. He picked up his... First win against Chicago in the 7-2 victory at home. Nashville's last outing. He's done a nice job here tonight, but he really hasn't been tested all that much. That shot wide of the goal. Predator set up. Cullen. He also has a hard shot. So does Jones. Who faked the shot, mishandled one set of her just out of his reach. Colin had it hop over his stick. Jones holding it in. Shot knocked down in front of Howard. Erickson tried to reverse it, didn't work. Colin with a chance up high. Howard stopped that. Jones, top of the right face-off circle. For Matt Cullen. Cullen with it again to the point to Jones. Back for Cullen. Pass to Cross and Smith couldn't pick it up. Klein with it. Here's Cullen again at the dot. Down low. Wilson threw it back out front. No one there. Out of the box is Cleary. So the Red Wings return to full strength. Just over five to play in the third. They need two goals. Nashville one for six in the power play. Red Wings 0 for two. And again, that's been a big part of the story. They're not enough power play opportunities compared to what the opposition's been getting. Weber. Back to pick it up, goes Smith. Gatsuk finding that puck for Kindle. Cleary left it for Franzen. But the shot went wide. Comes back to the line. Brendan Smith with a good head fake. Smith down low with it. Samuelson to the front of the net. That's it back to Kendall. Over to Franzen. Shoots one. Save made. Franzen picks up the rebound. Gostad covers him. For Datsuk at the half boards. Looks for someone open. Spots Kendall with some room and a shot. Samuelson over his stick. That's it there to pick it up. Slipped it through to Samuelson. Checked the line, though. And now he'll go back to retrieve it. Gets help from Datsuk for Kindle. The Red Wings want a completed change. Look at this. Look at this. Dahlberg and, and Michael Samuelson. Things aren't going rough, and Michael Samuelson's in a fight. Rarely does that happen. And the lines are going, oh, no, they're going to get in. <laughs> and nobody likes that. <laughs> Obvious frustration by Michael Samuelson and a lot of his teammates. And we'll take a break. 3.45 to go. And they're down by a pair. Under four minutes to play here at the Joe, the Wings have to get something going and get something going quickly if they're to climb back into this one. 
As do you, we have lots of questions. We'll try to provide some answers on the Red Wings live postgame coverage. Chris Osgood and Darren Elliott will be alongside as the Wings try to end this long streak of frustration here at Joe Louis Arena. Before the game, you had not heard of Merrick Mazanitz. Now you know a little bit more about him, but it doesn't make it any less frustrating, Mick. Thanks, John, and he's also going to provide us with the Chamberlain save of the game. As I said, he hasn't been challenged very severely tonight, but on this one, Darren Helm, he caught him sliding across. He thought he could get on the short side. Nice move by the kid to come across. The right side of the net for Darren is open, but he's a left-hand shot, so that's the way it's going for the Red Wings. Brought to you by Chamberlain. Nice job by the kid so far with a zero on the board with 3.45 to go, and we're four on four because offsetting penalties, and I wouldn't be surprised here to see Mike Babcock, even with 3.40 to go, pull his goaltender down by two and get an extra skater on the ice. That's Suk with Franzen, Ronwall, Erickson. Matsuk forced back by Fisher. Jonathan Erickson. Datsuk tipped before Conwell could get a shot. And as Mike Fisher stayed with the play, and now he'll bring it ahead to center. The former senator with a long shot. Jimmy Howard will hold on. Fisher, who Came over from Ottawa for a first and a third. Married to Carrie Underwood. Prior to training camp starting, he had to try to catch a chipmunk in his home. Caught on video. He had to go to the hospital for a tetanus shot. They got rid of the chipmunk, but not without a bite. Was he a singing chipmunk? <laughs> no. He was, he was singing all right. It wasn't, wasn't Elvin. It wasn't no. Elvin. <laughs> wasn't Elvin. <laughs> His wife was very proud. He did, got rid of the chipmunk, but paid a price. <laughs> Here's Tatar. This is a little son of a gun's can bite. Yeah, would you reach in for the rodent, Mick? You wouldn't have done that. Not without a glove on. No. <laughs> he did. He wears hockey gloves. You figured he'd know to put a glove on. I know. He tried something like yeah. That. I know they've eaten my garage door more than once. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well. Just over two to play he's in the a, third. He's a country, country bumpkin, that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> so Erickson waits for his mates to get organized here. To Conwall. For Darren Helm. Tried to go Bertuzzi's way. Didn't get there. Gostad. Up along with Matt Hendricks. Gostad to the corner there with Conwall. Loose puck for Erickson to Helm, and the teams are back at five aside. With 1.40 to play in the third period. Want to get Jimmy Howard out to get an extra skater here and break this shutout that Eric Mazonitz has at the other end of the ice. Just coming off a win over Chicago. I thought they'd have him out. There he goes now. I thought they'd have him out before with the four on four. So, Mazanek will hold on. And a minute 17 to go in a 2 nothing game, and the big boy play of the game is going to be the Gabriel Bork goal that made it 2 to nothing and give him a little breathing room. Happened here in the third period. Nice play by Stahlberg across the middle, lots of time. And too many white jerseys, not enough red on the spot. And uh, it's 2 to nothing at that point, our big boy play of the game. So, Datsuk, Zetterberg, Cleary, Franzen, Kendall, Smith. 117 to go, third period. Shots 25-24 Nashville. Datsuk. Partially got that faceoff back with the net empty. Zetterberg able to get it to the near boards, and Mike Fisher shot wide. Bork moves up on it. Smith with a pass for Franzen. Long shot in. Oh, Mazonitz is going to try to become the 12th goaltender to score a goal. That's got Sipa with a two-goal lead. The rookie attempting that. Kendall to center. 
Here to Zetterberg. Long shot, kick the side. Cleary gets checked by Stahlberg. Datsuk got that puck to the line here to Kindle. Back for Datsuk. Half minute to go and a shot blocked in front by Yossi. Away from Cleary. Put it to Gostek. Who lifts it down the ice in a race for the puck or will it be icing first? Won't have enough to get there. Smith with a good play got it up to Datsuk. Rink wide pass for Cleary. The shot by Bertuzzi. That hit glass and out of play is with 5.3 seconds left. Nashville's going to win this game. Yes, they are, and that makes us uh, show you this for your Miller moment brought to you by Miller Lite. It'll be the only goal that Nashville needed on a power play after a giveaway and a knuckleball by Shea Weber with just five seconds left in the second period will do the undoing of the Red Wings tonight. They picked up. Poor time with coming off six games with only and no wins, just point every game to have a, a poor night like tonight. As the Red Wings get shut out, Merrick Mazonitz, his first career National Hockey League shutout. Coming off a win over Chicago, 7-2, and the Red Wings, for just the second time, they're past 11 games, don't get a point, and uh, the eighth straight home loss hasn't had this many at home since 1986, but on a rare occasion, they fail to get a point. First time in six, they haven't gone to extra time. Not always whether you win or lose, but the way you do it, and the way they lost tonight was not a very pretty one. They won't like it. 2-0 the final. Let's go to John Keating. All right, Kenny, thanks. We continue to say that the wings are due, that it's going to end tonight. Tonight's the night, we keep saying over and over again. But if anything, the wings look less likely to win tonight than they have in quite some time. And that's probably, Ozzy, the most disturbing trend about what we saw tonight. Yeah, for sure. There was absolutely no silver lining to this game whatsoever. Maybe the only one is Brennan Smith being solid in his return, playing over 20 minutes and, and making good play after good play. But other than that, just a bad loss all around. We said uh, early on that they didn't really take control of the hockey game in the first. They never took control second or third either. And as Ozzie said, very disturbing. All right. Well, we are getting all set for Red Wings Live. A Sort of disappointing version of Red Wings Live, to be sure, but it's around the corner. You'll hear from Mike Babcock and the rest of the players as we roll on this Tuesday night from the Joe.